So um, my sticky notes is that I watched that, I rewatched that video about Darcy's costuming. And I was like, I wonder what Elizabeth's costuming is like throughout the movie. So I made note of every outfit that she wears and it's just the same the whole time. You don't see the same exchange. <laughs> so I was like, oh well. <laughs> she said Elizabeth actually is perfect the whole time. Yeah, yeah. We don't but need I to do, do any work on Because in a lot of movies they like have a different she'd be like wearing a different outfit in every scene. But I like mm-hmm. how in this one they like reuse some of the same dresses because that like makes sense. Because she lives on a farm and has four sisters. So like of course she's gonna like yeah. reuse outfits. So I liked that. That level of realism was good. Yeah, if they're like poor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That was so always poor. my I can least only favorite. Twenty different dresses. Oh no! But and only five. two servants and a cook. I know. No, that was my favorite. So my poor. least favorite line in the miniseries is when Jane says, "We're not very poor, Lizzie." I'm like, "Bitch, would you? <laughs> just yes, you are. Up? Like, that's the literally the whole point of the movie is that you're gonna be destitute." Yeah. <laughs> like. That's why it's such a big deal that Lydia yeah, runs you... off with Mr. Wickham, who's lying about having money. It's like, she's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, There are two <laughs> moments where, like, I love Jane in the 2005 version. I think she mm-hmm. is a very good balance of, like, she's so sweet and kind mm-hmm. and, like, intelligent. But there's one other scene in the miniseries. It's after uh, Mr. Bennett gets the letter describing, mm-hmm. like, they're found and they're going to be married if you can pay this much money, etc. Mm-hmm. And Jane says, he must really be in love with her then. And her dad goes, you can think that if you want, I guess. And she goes, hmm. I'm like, are you, <laughs> like, are you stupid? <laughs> Bessie! So funny. And it's come so on. Jane, and- like, she is very sweet, but she, like, she's not stupid. Yeah, that's like, the thing. She that's... knows Mr. Wickham. <laughs> They've met. Yeah. That oh line drives gosh. me crazy every time. I'm so like, this ridiculous. is... She who would not say that, actually. <laughs> she wouldn't. It's like the line in the 2005 where... um jane leaves for london for a little bit and everyone's like waving goodbye and the mom says like try not to be too much of a burden Mm -hmm. when is jane ever like her entire life has been constantly worrying about being too much of a burden she's so tightly wound like she's the last person you didn't say that to (laughs) she's this big like leave her alone (laughs) from others she's six ounces tall yes she is she's like a little too forgiving not of mr wickham though because she's not stupid but she's because she's like, not stupid on, but it, it like i understand the point of the line because the mom is just like so <laughs> yeah anyway um not to like yeah. dive into it i didn't mean to do that because we haven't started <laughs> we haven't we don't even have an acronym no not and at that's all. something i haven't thought because i also have notes mm-hmm. but um but not that one not the main one not that one <laughs> i'm gonna close this like of course not it could be despite with a capital s everything with a capital t elizabeth gets married <laughs> <laughs> <This is spin. laughs> yeah i like that <laughs> it kind of That's... reminds me like i remember for some reason so vividly like I was in the line at the grocery store and you know they have always like tabloids when you're waiting to check out Mm -hmm. and it was when George Clooney got married and the headline it was huge hell freezes over (laughs) and then underneath (laughs) George Clooney got married or whatever it's just so funny because he had like famously said that he you know he wouldn't get married ever Uh so I don't know why it's stuck in my mind so much years later, but I still remember it. So it's kind of the same thing in my mind where Elizabeth is like, oh, mm, no. <laughs> I'm Yeah, oh, when hell freezes over. Actually, yeah. We are the last men in the world I could ever be prevailed upon to marry. Cut to two then when Darcy hours comes later. She like, proposes, she's like, oh, it's a little, it's yeah. a little chilly. Like, oh, mm. 
Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell freezes over. Elizabeth and Bennett. <laughs> In love. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's the only acronym that I could think of. Um, The only one that came to mind when I was climbing over there was um, Mr. Wickham. Mr. Wickham. But that's all he I got. says that line so forcefully. It's hilarious. It's like the only thing he says in the whole movie that comes with any impact whatsoever. Yeah. It's like, Mr. Wickham, and you go, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys in the Eagles together? What's all the. <laughs> the that's velocity. All the velocity. <laughs> that's one thing that I was going to mention um, in regards to the costumes is the only time in the whole movie we see Darcy in a hat, it's when he sees Mr. Wickham for the first time. Oh. And his collar comes up to here, and his hat comes down <laughs> here. That's true. And he he's goes... like the he's like the um, you know the signs like the neighborhood watch. <laughs> <laughs> he's the stranger danger sign. <laughs> yeah, he looks like that. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> and Bingley's standing there next to him, like Jane is radiant. We came to check on you. Enjoy the day, Mr. Wickham. <laughs> please come to my party. He's like radiating radiating light yeah 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 mr darcy's <laughs> sucking it in <laughs> an absolute black hole of a man <laughs> so funny like i'm you know this about me i'm morally opposed to prequels of any kind mm-hmm. um but i would think it would be kind of funny to see how they got to be friends <laughs> in any world <laughs> yeah they're so opposite they <laughs> are they're so sweet though I do love the scene where and we again haven't officially started but whatever we have so <laughs> when um Bingley goes to propose to Jane it goes horribly wrong the first time because he gets nervy and he's like um bye <laughs> he like runs out crying so wedding anyway. and crying <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing anyway but he's wearing his little gray jacket, blue pants, and Darcy's wearing blue jacket, gray pants, and they have little matching vests. It's so cute. <laughs> and he has some practice outfits, and he's like, he's like, okay, that did not go well. Yeah, he's like, here's expect, what you can do. <laughs> I didn't expect Mrs. Bennett to say all that, and so now I'm just head empty. And he's like, okay, let's practice. I yeah, I love when he's like, Miss Bennett, and he goes, Mr. Bingley. <laughs> <laughs> the lowest his voice is in the entire movie and he's pretending to be Rosamund Pike <laughs> like, come on you're ridiculous he's so freaking sweet <laughs> I love everything about that scene <laughs> oh it's so good it's such a good scene it's um, wonderful anyway welcome to women in STEM <laughs> wait no wait before we do the intro I have a question okay. um would you how much time do you have why because <laughs> i was thinking we could watch some of the best scenes and like we could do like a whoa you just left no uh no i didn't oh you're here <laughs> nah <laughs> <laughs> okay Here's real quick the accusations <laughs> how much time do i have because we could watch something Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the best scenes in the movie. We could watch, like, um, maybe the proposal scenes, like the balls. I I don't know. Obviously, I think we should watch the proposal scene. Break that down. (laughs) (laughs) Why not both? All three. (laughs) I don't count the first. I Listen, the girl on the video. The one where he comes into the room and he's like, how are you? That's not a proposal. And he's like, okay. See ya. Have a good day. Yeah, I don't think that. That's really not a proposal counts. scene. Because he didn't. Maybe even he wanted try. it to be. No, he didn't he get didn't the question out. There are two proposal scenes yeah. in the movie. Yeah, that's that's that on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, two Darcy to Elizabeth proposal scenes, and then there's also one botched Bingley to Jane proposal scene, and then another one that goes <laughs> fine. So they're actually oh, yeah. they're actually more similar. They have more in common than you might think. <laughs> Of course they do. Because they're, they're... stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know how to talk to girls. No, and they fall in love with girls from the worst family in the world. Mm-hmm, but they do know how to dress nice. And they know how to be rich, baby. And mm-hmm. at, in the end, isn't that what we're all looking what for in a spouse? What else matters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about that with Neil earlier what today. I'm like, I don't even need to like my husband that much. Or <laughs> do you want a man who dresses well and has so, so, so much money? 
like it's not even a question you know like oh he's nice to you oh he likes your family okay and (laughs) 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 funny yeah we could do that we also don't have to that was just a thought um i think we should we can do that i don't know i don't care (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we can, um, oh my gosh, maybe we can say, welcome to Women in STEM. <laughs> Today we're talking about Pride and Prejudice, but not just the book, mostly the the 2005 moody movie adaptation of it. It Sorry. is moody as well, so I think that wasn't yeah. even, <laughs> it's really true. accurate. Yeah, it wasn't even a mistake. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, at least, I don't want to speak for Olivia, but this is, I might say this a lot on this channel, but this is one of the best movies of all time. I feel like every week I'm like, this is one of my favorites. And we've been doing this every week You're for like, shut up about eight any movie. This is the movie every week. Yeah. <laughs> every week. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm full of joy and yeah. love the world. You know? Well, except for I don't want to see week. any complaints about this in the comments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna turn comments off for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> because we're always flooded with them um yeah we pretty much every week you say that except for the one week where you recorded yourself for 50 hours talking about age of ultron Ultron. (laughs) (laughs) like yeah Mm -hmm. it's the best of times and the worst of times and so anyway (laughs) um do we want to talk about stuff first generally and then we can like wrap it up with analyzing a scene or something yeah that sounds fun cool yeah let's do that because then we'll we'll get it out of the way and we don't have to like i'm sure we won't forget what we've said and repeat things no when has that literally ever happened every single week when we talk about jurassic park again <laughs> again <laughs> and s- for some reason why um, why do we give up such like a guy who's only seen jurassic park vibes like every movie is like this actually kind of reminds me of that Spielberg film. Did you ever see it? One of the most famous movies ever made and has basically nothing to do with most of the things we talk about. But for some reason, any stringent connection, we're like, this is, there's a family in this. This is just like Jurassic Park, which is all about parenting. And we just keep talking about that for 20 minutes. <laughs> we never, we never, re- and then the one time that we're going to talk about Jurassic Park extensively, <laughs> apparently, I somehow go on a 20 minute tangent about the road to El Dorado that I don't remember I don't remember this anyway (laughs) for those who don't know Pride and Prejudice was a book by Jane Austen (laughs) um she's old now but at the time (laughs) at the time she was you know a, a current author and it's about class disparity and gender disparity um most importantly it's about two sisters named jane and elizabeth and their other sisters that they don't really care about as much (laughs) (laughs) but jane and elizabeth oh they love each other baby they're besties they're all one year apart oh my gosh and yet for some reason jane and elizabeth are so tight kitty and lydia (laughs) are so tight and mary's like poor mary (laughs) what hello like tell me something for once and they're like no thank you (laughs) <laughs> i do like that vibe in um the fun thing about this story is that we get so much focus on elizabeth and jane in the book and on darcy mm-hmm. too we get his perspective in the book but it's so fun to see in the movie how they flesh out different characters and they do this in like in, in different adaptations how they treat characters differently or similarly the changes that they make the choices even down to the costumes which we're going to talk about at some point but like there's just there's a lot of detail in the book, but not so much that translating it to a different medium doesn't create something new and interesting. Like mm-hmm. the BBC miniseries and this movie to me are two completely different things. Like, yeah, they're based on the same thing, but like there are it's, days when I want to It's a totally watch. different experience. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they both have really good, like strong things in their favor, like for the miniseries obviously they have more time to be really detailed and take their time and so a lot of people feel it's a more like accurate depiction or it's more truthful to the book because they can take the time necessary to really flesh out the story right and you really feel like oh it has been a year 
you know yeah it's like in the 2005 they have to kind of speed it up because it's a movie and it has to fit into one movie right <laughs> yeah yeah you've but, got two hours I... joe Wright, go mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly he's like don't even worry about it <laughs> it's fantastic and this is something that we talked about when we were talking about adaptation specifically how he does a really good job of turning it into something cinematic so it's appealing to like a 2005 audience that wouldn't necessarily sit down for the whole miniseries or sit down and read the entire book you know it, it takes a while and this is mm-hmm. something that's a little bit faster that people are kind of more willing to sit through but it's so engaging like it makes sense for this story to be a movie yeah absolutely um i i feel like the the miniseries is what the story like looked like on the surface whereas mm-hmm. the movie is what it felt like you know it's that's so something that dramatic. joe wright is so, yeah. it's so dramatic and joe wright is so talented in making it feel lifelike like characters eat in almost every scene mm-hmm. uh you know they're at the breakfast table they're putting butter on their biscuits and like all these it just it feels like that's what a big family at a breakfast table would be doing like if they're loud they're kind of messy they're all over the place mm-hmm. um you know and and maybe the miniseries is more historically accurate and there's a couple complaints about um like costume choices in the movie mm-hmm. um that people are like that's not they would never wear that at the time and I'm like that's okay but that's kind of the point you see is like this is these are things that are supposed to translate to modern audiences mm-hmm. it's it's again the you know lifelike versus realistic the right. miniseries is very maybe like point for point realistic whereas the movie creates this it, it's got its own energy to it like that is the most vibrant film depicting a period piece yeah like there's so much emotion to it it doesn't feel like you're just sitting and watching people sit and kind of carefully talk like it's so like yeah. there's so much movement and power flowing through the whole thing yeah I love it I love when they're um Mrs. Bennett and all the sisters are like sitting in the room and they're just lounging you know and kind of bickering with each other or whatever and then somebody comes to the door and they're like act natural but then they freak out. They're not acting natural at all. But then when the, you know, when the men come in, they're all, you know, one of them's doing their embroidery and one of them's reading and they're all sitting so carefully. So you Perfectly. know that it's like, it's so fun to see that kind of peek inside of like, this is the appearance that you're supposed to maintain. But of course, nobody's really doing that. It's just right, like yeah. when they're going to be perceived by other people. Yeah. No one actually like oh, walks God. so slowly, so carefully around the room. They walk so slowly in these movies. Mm-hmm. They inch around. I'm like, I know y'all got to take up time to fill the day, but like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's so fun to see that in the beginning of the movie where Elizabeth is like, she's walking around the farm and she's kind of running everywhere. She's leaping across the like um, little bridge that they have mm-hmm. where their ducks swim around like that first of all that's the most charming little home you've ever seen in your life Mm -hmm. but also she's like she's energetic she's moving you're not you're never going to be bored and I'm not saying you're bored in the miniseries either but it's it is like you were saying earlier it's very dynamic it's very easy to be engaged the entire time Mm -hmm. and it is very like it's obviously meant to be a little bit exaggerated like there's a scene where Elizabeth is sitting on the swing all day or when she's she has that run in with Mr. Darcy and she's starting to feel kind of guilty and she stares into the mirror all day all day it's just like a don't even talk to me about that scene she's not standing in front of a mirror without even blinking for a literal 12 hours like of course not right but it's to set the mood or like when she's out like standing on a cliff oh and the music sweet and the wind it's is like, like... A, that's not happening that's not something that really happens in real life but it's setting the the tone of the story, you know. Like it's yeah. a movie. It's the, it only a movie. <laughs> it only a movie. <laughs> I really think about that every single day. It All the freaking time. It's constant. Mm-hmm. It's someone else's inside joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. 
yeah, that scene where she's standing on the cliff is stunning. Because again, in the miniseries, they pick like a... Do you remember the scene in the miniseries? Where she's standing like kind of on a, a, a rock. It's like the most boring landscape. <laughs> she's like, this is beautiful. I'm like, bestie. That's your backyard. Yeah, Come on. Been like been before? Yeah, it's not it's grand. <laughs> yeah, it's like, sure, whatever. But in the movie where she's, they're standing under these, they're having lunch under these huge trees mm. while they get their carriage fixed. And she's standing on this huge cliff. And it's like, it is so, ooh, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, um, there was a girl at church the other day who said, sometimes you have to lie to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. I told you this. Yeah. Um, and I, Her words. like, uh, that's a truth. That is a truth. Okay, sometimes you have to lie to tell the, I don't know, like, can you put that on the screen right here? Like, sometimes you have to lie to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. That, it's true. Yes. And, you know, maybe what it really looked like was in the miniseries, but baby, what it felt like, I keep driving this point home, but like, maybe it's a lie, but that's the truth. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That's that on that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, Kelsey is her name, I think. Kelsey? Kelsey? Kylie? I think the girl from church who said that. Thank you to somebody who may have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I could look up her name, but I probably won't remember it. Hallie! It was Hallie. It didn't even Hallie. start with K. Oh, yeah. So that's different. Oh, the one more thing that I was going to mention, one specific detail, is yeah. when Lizzie goes to check on Jane after she's sick. Um, mm-hmm. And she shows up at Bingley's house and it's she, her hair is like completely undone. It's like flowing down past her shoulders, all this stuff. And I see a lot of people complain about that scene specifically. They're like, that would never in a million years happen. But like, that's the point of that scene, right? Is that she shows up to this house and she looks wild and undone. Maybe her hair wasn't undone, but you know. uh, It would have been a little bit. I mean, have you ever like. She just walked. You know, she's just. Four miles. Yeah. Yeah. And she's wearing. In a a dress or less. So many freaking layers. And, layers. and, and she's like worried about her sister and she doesn't like Caroline Bingley. You know, she's like... There's yeah, a lot of, of course she's going to be a little... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, the point of the scene is that they're making fun of her for being a little... Uh, Unkempt or looking out of a little place. bit improper. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So... And Darcy doesn't care. Dar- she walks in and he's like, oh... Hi. She's she's upstairs. Yeah. He can't speak. All he can do. Yeah. <laughs> he I was, love he the, one... <laughs> the Darcy and Caroline dynamic where, you know, when they're talking about like accomplished women and she lists off these like a billion different things that a person has to be to be truly accomplished. And Mr. Darcy doesn't like say anything and then he looks over and Elizabeth is reading and he's like, and of course she should like to read. <laughs> that's literally all he says and then she like pounces on him for being like i don't know how you can even know one accomplished woman this is so demanding and he's like i literally didn't even say it i was trying to accomplish it was caroline him. like I don't... yeah like it's always he caroline. loves to think the worst of him he that's... comes to think the worst of him like mostly because of caroline yeah interesting <laughs> to be fair, caroline is terrible and that actress she does really good because her part is She's small fantastic. compared to yeah like caroline's role in the book and in the, like the miniseries but she does a really, really good job of, like, she just is, she hates everything and everybody. Mm-hmm. And she's, She does a like, really good job at just making you immediately kind of, like, eh. Yeah, you know? but and also she's in the background. Like she's, yeah, you're, you're not supposed to be focusing on her, but you do in any scene. And you see, like, her just kind of rolling her eyes or, like, giving this snide look or, shr- you know, it's just mm-hmm. her, the little mannerisms that she yeah, Displays like she's so really good at being well a mean done. girl. Yeah, even in Austin times, you know, so yeah. good. She's so good. It's really, really great. Um, oh, I love I, how um, in Sense and Sensibility as well. Like it's such a Jane Austen thing to have like one sister-in-law character who's so mean. She <laughs> yeah. just hates the main character for literally no reason. <laughs> you know, like at the beginning of Sense and Sensibility, Mr. Dashwood like dies, the dad dies, and the yeah, yeah, the one like daughter in law is like they don't really need all that money, 
In fact, they don't need anything. In fact, they don't. I mean, what have they ever done for you? And he's like, you're right. Instead of being like, nothing because they're children. <laughs> and they don't have My any family. money. Like, no, honestly. Nine-year-old Margaret and being like, you've never done anything for me. You, you can, can make it on your own. Money. And it's like, you're her older brother. Like, why shouldn't you give her money? She's Margaret. She's so little. She just likes her atlas. <laughs> I also was thinking about that movie when I woke up this morning. Um, and in the book, they describe... Uh, why am I blanking on his name? Hugh Grant. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. describe Hugh Grant's they describe character Hugh as Grant. being... <laughs> <laughs> Jane Austen was really ahead of her time. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. like this guy's gonna be the villain of Paddington too. She had a vision of Hugh Grant. Yeah, like, um, yeah. but <laughs> she describes his character as like he's not all that good looking. And then they go ahead and cast Hugh Grant. Yeah, and they're like, okay, so, famously good looking Hugh Grant, but he's really come on. playing like a kind of like shy, you know. He it totally He's a little bit is. uncomfortable in basically any situation the same as darcy but like he's halfway darcy halfway bingley you know he he's is because like, he's very charismatic dude, but he's also like so friendly yeah so charismatic really good with people he immediately knows how to get margaret to trust him mm-hmm. and not in like a he's like this girl's upset i'm gonna take care of her yeah you know yeah. and he's he's very friendly he's with very genuine. Um, he's just a he's a really really sweet man yeah. I love him. I am like obsessed with it as much as I when we're talking about Pride and Prejudice today. But it's fitting to have like a little yeah. Austin tangent. Like probably out of all of Austin's men that I know about, mm-hmm. he's like he's so so, good. so wonderful. He's like Edward I'm not Paris. like I don't really want to be like I don't I don't really want to do I just kind of want to live in a cute little town and just like have a really soft stable job where I can just live and enjoy my family he's like I don't want to go to academia I don't want to be a lawyer I don't want to go to the military he's he's not like wildly yeah. ambitious he's like let me don't want any of that for a second <laughs> I Jeez. am obsessed with him yeah um the same thing that you mentioned though where he's like supposed to be kind of like not wildly attractive and then it's Hugh Grant it's the same thing in the 2005 movie where he's like she's handsome but like not stunning you know and she's and it's Kiara Knightley <laughs> like come on I think if you were to try to list some of the most beautiful women in the world it would be like Lupita Nyong'o uh, Megan Fox and Kiara Knightley, Kira Knightley all tied for her. first it all, yeah people would think of her it's so funny to be like because Rosamund Pike is also like so beautiful and it makes she's, she's like a perfect casting stunning. for Jane she's oh. so pretty but then it's like insane to be like yeah I don't know she's handsome like she's cute I guess but she's not gorgeous. like her sister like, mm, okay <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the Barbie movie when the narrator pipes in for the first time in like the whole movie to be like yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's like, Margot Robbie. Robbie is not a good casting choice to make this point it's the same thing yeah <laughs> But at the same time, it is a really good casting choice to make that point. Because, like, if Margot Robbie feels that way, like, literally anybody can feel that way. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, Yeah. obviously. It makes sense. But, oh, yeah. Same thing with um, Matthew McFadden, too. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Because... Oh, good old Matt Mac. What a a guy. (laughs) Good old Matt Mac. (laughs) I've always said that. I am kind of amazed... And it's because I've always kind of been attracted to the weird looking guys, I guess. But I, like talking <laughs> to people more and more, they're like, this Darcy's straight up ugly. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking Like, I don't get that's Darcy, though. You know, yeah. Like, I, like, to, cool. He's like, I'm like, but I'm like, yeah, maybe he's not Colin Firth, but right. I, I have a hard time understanding how people can't fine uh, and i'm like sure maybe he's not like the most conventionally attractive guy but like he's not he's tall looking. broad shoulders yeah. he's not and especially voice, like when and- he like softens a little bit and she's like i'm very fond of walking or when they're talking with georgiana like the couple times that he smiles listen like, okay, the on. first time that he smiles in the movie changed my life mm-hmm. you feel like you see in color for the first time <laughs> yeah. he's his whole face like and like and Lizzie's like you can tell she's hair like hair <sighs> even looks like three shades lighter. Yeah. Like what's going on? <laughs> and it's because they're just not dressing him in such like harsh contrasts and 
Yeah. You know, giving him some sunlight on his face. <laughs> just looking <laughs> haunted in the ballroom but like still yeah these pale british folk yeah, <laughs> yeah. i actually because i think he's a perfect choice for him too because mm-hmm. he's tall he's awkward okay let's uh, this is something i wanted to address as well today that i have not written down but it rattles That's around fine. my head a lot yeah again i'm going to be comparing the miniseries in this one i think that colin firth again is a really good choice to reflect the darcy that's written in the book is like he is a little bit proud. You know, he's a little bit snotty about things. Um, and he doesn't take the time to develop his people skills because he thinks it's beneath him. You know, mm-hmm. he he talks to the people that he wants to talk to, but like, yeah, like, that's not my problem. But like, Matthew McFaddy and Darcy is genuinely like having a panic attack at any given moment. <laughs> you know, like he's so anxious and like, like yeah, he looks Elizabeth so un- and if he's like, I don't have the talent of conversing easily with people that I've never met before. And you can tell it's like taking his entire energy to just <laughs> he get pauses that out. after each word. And she's like, maybe you should practice because she's such a tease. And he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks they're flirting. She's like, I want you to die while I watch. <laughs> yeah. and the thing I is, love like, their I dynamic. I really watched it yesterday and like she is very flirty like the entire time, you know? You know, yeah, it's like, just like girl, it's such a tease. Like she has four sisters, and her dad is like very witty and sarcastic, and they have that back and forth. That's just how she, you know, she likes to tease. She likes to laugh. Yeah, she likes to have a really quick and clever conversation. And but he just like has never really experienced that before. So he's like, it just is she being mean to me? Is she being nice to me? <laughs> <laughs> and then he actually has to ask later in the movie to clarify yeah. he's like okay i've been really confused this whole time are you making fun of me <laughs> she's like no <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i love his character mm-hmm. and i i do think the flaw in the movie is because you don't have as much time you can't flesh out both characters so perfectly like in the book and in the miniseries you really get a very good picture of okay lizzie's way too quick to jump to assumptions right darcy really has a problem connecting with people but they learn from each other and they're able to meet more in the middle i feel like in the movie because it's lizzie's story it you know we get almost the entire focus is just on her and her side Mm -hmm. of things so the flaw in that is that you don't necessarily see darcy change and make the choice to change as much Mm-hmm. You know, what we get mostly is the idea that Lizzie was wrong to jump to assumptions of him instead of right. she was wrong about some things, but she was right about other things. I mean, right. you get that a little bit with like Lydia and with Jane, not to the extent that you do in like a longer version of the story. Not that this makes it bad or invalid. I just think that that's a strength in some other versions that this one doesn't share as to that extent. Because this Darcy. Yeah, he starts out in like a kind when of you place. watch it it kind of just seems like the only times you see him being maybe yeah a little bit rude or a little bit prideful it's because you're seeing it through lizzie's perspective and not because he's actually that way mm-hmm. yeah. it is more the arc of like her deciding to change which is like yeah i think it's it's nice but it is a little bit different from like if you were to watch the movie and then be inspired to read the book you might be a little mm-hmm. bit surprised by the book yeah yeah <laughs> And I think that's, I think that's a really big reason why people get, connect so well. Um, I forgot my train of thought, so you're welcome to take the floor while I recover it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to, let me look at my uh, notes here. The main thing is, like, so she wears white when it's her nightgown, but then she also wears white at the ball the second time when they have... Oh, my gosh, that outfit. My friend Jonathan's um, favorite scene in the whole movie is when they're dancing, and then suddenly there's nobody there. Fades away. She's got the pearls in her hair, and 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 the haunting melody is playing. Everyone else can go home, actually. his favorite one. Like, we were watching it um, with, like, a group of friends, like, back in high school, right? And somebody mentioned, like, that that scene was, like, I don't know, a little over the top or cheesy or something. And Jonathan immediately was like, okay, you have to admit. 
<laughs> he immediately jumped to its defense. I was like, yeah, John. Actually, he's the only one who gets it. <laughs> yeah, Can really we invite dumb. him on? To talk- we should have invited him on to talk about that. Um, oh, I did remember that. what I was going to Go say, it. if that's... Okay, perfect. Um, I think the reason that people connect with Darcy's character from the novel originally is that, you know, he his character shows that he's capable of change and capable of making that choice as well that he listens to lizzie's opinion Mm -hmm. you know corrects the thing that she is wrong about but says okay you you had a point i'm going to listen to you i'm gonna make the change to become a better version of myself not so that she will love him now but she's like he said she was right i was unpleasant and these are things that i can choose to be better about to have a more fulfilling life for myself you know that he doesn't force himself on her he doesn't force herself to change her opinion of him mm-hmm. he just he shows that he's capable of respect and listening and growth and you know then she has to go on her own journey but like that's what makes this character so appealing right is that vision of a perfect man who listens to you <laughs> right <laughs> like imagine that (laughs) yeah it reminds me of that um I probably still have the screenshot but the bus ride that you were on we overheard somebody saying that Pride and Prejudice wasn't a great example for men to learn from because there's not enough male perspective in it which is like the point right like if you're gonna learn how to (laughs) how to be better you have to learn other people's perspective on your behavior (laughs) So that's pretty funny. And that's why, yeah, that's again why this story is so lasting and a lot of people really resonate with it because there are the deeper things of like the gender inequality and the wealth disparity and these kinds of things that are still, you know, prevalent in different ways today. But there's mm-hmm. always like on the personal level, some sort of like you have some sort of experience where like you're mad at somebody because they're in the wrong or you're in the wrong and you need to change or, you know, X, Y, Z. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. important to have that personal element where, like, he's a guy and he has to listen and, like, change, you know? And she does the same thing. Yeah. It's She's a like, beautiful it relationship dynamic. Yeah, like, it doesn't matter whose perspective it is. The point is that it's, like, an interpersonal relationship between both of them. So you can learn about both of them from the story, like, no matter whose side of the story you're hearing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely it's really really and another thing that he does is um you know because even when he's correcting her he doesn't like sit her down and make her listen to him he writes her a letter says you can read it if you want i'm not like these are the things that you accuse me of you know and Mm -hmm. he just leaves it at that she could read it he would never know if she didn't but like these are the things that he he puts it back in her court Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like he doesn't and it, make her listen or yell it, at you know, her like, or yeah exactly if you were trying to like explain all of that but you were like frustrated and it was like in the heat of the moment it wouldn't come out yes. right and you know it would lead yes. to a bigger argument and xyz Perhaps right in the rain but they they leave right and he like sits down and is like so that she knows not even necessarily to like clear his own name or say face or whatever Mm -hmm. but just so they like have an understanding he takes the time and like writes out the story exactly how he remembers it happening and leaves it with her right which i think is yeah sometimes that's just a good like conflict resolution skill you know to not be like so angry and so hasty like you have time to explain your side of things and work it out and you don't have to like explode right now sometimes it's better to take a step back and write it out and make sure you have all the details and like really think about what you're saying yeah totally and it's beautiful detail in the movie too where she is standing and looking at herself in the mirror and you see the sun go across the room and it fades into like you could tell it's been more than a full day Mm -hmm. that since they've had this argument and she's still just like completely in shock and he's had time to like collect his thoughts and yeah Uh, like you you can tell that they did take time Mm -hmm. that he took time to like process and she's in a space now where she's maybe more willing to listen and yeah you know it's just it's really well done 
he comes into the room and like leaves the letter and ha- like says a few sentences and then leaves and then she like turns around suddenly as if he has like just come into the room and it's just such a like again it's not literal <laughs> it's just that like she's been kind of like in her own head and then she suddenly yeah. comes to this realization of like what just happened and she's able to like clear her mind and read the letter and whatever it's just yeah. it's a nice touch of her kind of like snapping out of it and he's already uh, gone because be- he's still talking like he- you've got the voiceover and uh, yeah, like and the, the, so the lovely thing, though into he's still uh, into his the reading letter. the letter yeah. yes yes exactly it's beautiful like there's enough ambiguity that you're like okay was he actually talking or is this her reading the letter and she just kind of heard him talking coming into the room or like yeah it's like it's it's you know mm-hmm. and i'll leave it at that yeah <laughs> it's so what beautiful what can we say you know what <laughs> yeah even if this wasn't one of the best stories of all time the movie is visually so beautiful it's really nice the colors it, are really nice the cinematography and composition are yeah really mm-hmm. well done yeah joe yeah. wright really went off with this one he does every time but mm-hmm. this one especially i mean atonement you know the green dress that Kira knightley wears in atonement mm-hmm. like that's how i understand the feeling of love at first sight was <laughs> yeah. me seeing that dress for the first time and going oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh mm-hmm. and you know and he- in the first ballroom scene where she meets mr darcy for the first time she's also wearing a dark green dress so that's just oh my gosh <laughs> she wears earth tones it's like a, a gray a brown and a green the entire time unless she's wearing white which she wears at the ball when she meets um georgiana mm-hmm. and at the end when she's in her nightgown and he proposes again but anyway <laughs> also when she goes you know the scene you were mentioning where she has all her hair down and she's like just run to the place she's wearing like a light gray striped dress that matches mr bingley so that's just cute oh interesting. just looking after jane yeah that's adorable <laughs> you can tell whose side you're supposed to be on by who's matching mr bingley in any given scene <laughs> I and this is another example of perfect casting because I really like the dude they have in the he's miniseries. So he's loud, he's boisterous, he's very put together. But this one, he's just kind of a goof. Yeah. He's giggly and he's sweet and he's a little dumb. Oh, and he loves people so much. Yeah. His bright blue eyes and his sh- like shock of red hair that's just poof. Yeah. Like he's another one where I'm like, he maybe not might not be as physically attractive i don't know but just the energy that he gives <laughs> like, to the people role have weird standards about that you know <laughs> they are like unironically they do i'm like are y'all not seeing this beautiful boy and his lovely <laughs> smile yeah. he's got the tears in his eyes when jane accepts his proposal and they're both crying uh-huh. and they're like yeah i feel like it's i so have like a ton so i wanted beautiful. to say but it doesn't matter you know we've all seen the movie Go watch it again. (laughs) I did. Yeah. (laughs) Once yesterday and half this morning. Mm, Nice. Yeah. It's just, like, there's never too many times to watch this movie. Every time you notice something new, and every time it becomes more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, you mentioned the score a little while ago. The song that plays at the beginning oh, is the mm-hmm. same song that she hears when Georgiana is playing the piano. It's the same song that she plays badly on the piano at the aunt's house. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Like I love the 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 repetition of the theme every now and then. Like she plays it haltingly right before Darcy's first proposal. You know, it's not whole or complete yet, but you, you know, this is a song that feels like home to her. And then she she sees Georgiana. She is at Darcy's house, and I remember reading something that Joe Wright said. He's like, "I wanted her in that scene to be reminded of home," and That's... I, it's the most beautiful sentiment in the world that that she's in this completely new, unfamiliar place with this person that she's never met before, but she has this overwhelming sense of familiarity there. 
right. like I I am That's home. So sweet. And then and like Georgiana feels that. the same way, right? Like they meet and she's like, "You are Elizabeth. Like I've heard so much about you. I feel like we're friends already, right?" Which is like, yeah. She's just the cutest girl in the world. She's so sweet. <laughs> and then, yeah, but I love that feeling because another, like, huge theme in the whole thing is, like, this idea of, like, sisterhood and, like, familial love, mm-hmm. right? So it's nice that she, again, yeah, she's in Darcy's place with her aunt and uncle and it's kind of unfamiliar and she sees Georgiana and hears, like, the sound of home. And so then there's kind of an immediate, like, sisterly connection there that she doesn't oh, have with sweet. Caroline because Caroline's not very nice. Caroline sucks. <laughs> oh it's so and that i love the scene where darcy comes home and georgiana sees and he spins her around and they're both laughing and they're like, so happy yeah. like so that's cute. the cutest thing that's not something you can plan yeah you know to have just like that pu- uh, that surprise the unexpected you're home you know yeah. and so fun for elizabeth to see that just how much love he has for her and how much Georgiana adores him and like Mm -hmm. okay all right you know like he really is genuine yeah you know this is after the letter and everything but like she's had time to really like let this settle in and sit with it and like rethink every interaction they've ever had probably (laughs) yeah 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 I love that whole thing too where like they first come in and the servants of the house are like we love Mr. Darcy he's super nice like he treats us so well and they're like go around town like they're in the the hotel like in the pub you know and everyone's like hey Darcy like (laughs) loves him they say such nice things about him he takes the uncle fishing and the uncle comes back and is like this guy's awesome this guy's so down to earth like (laughs) everybody's like obsessed with him right and so then she Mm -hmm. I think it helps her not just have like Mr. Wickham's word and her his word right but she also has like her own experiences and everyone else's experiences and it's like well the Bingley's really like him and my aunt and uncle really like him and his servants really like him and his sister really likes him and, you know, yeah. gives him a little more cre- credibility yeah yeah for sure oh he's just so sweet mm-hmm. where they he introduces them officially for the first time and he again breaks into that beautiful smile yeah but like Lizzie's already kind of she's teasing Georgiana and she kind of teases him too a little bit and that's the right, first time she that she's done that been since. able to do and that's when he smiles is because first of all he's like I want you to like each other so bad the, both of you are so important to me and it's really important to me that you get along and they do and then a Lizzie brings him back into it and she's like here's a funny story about your brother he's so silly right <laughs> like that's the that whole scene is so cute like that's the first time they're like they can be each other together, you know? Yeah. Be themselves with each other. Yeah. Whichever. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? I don't know. I do this for fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't think of any um thing else. Oh, I can. It's about Mary. She's so Mary. Sweet. I just I, I feel Mary. like oh, everybody's so mean to her. Yeah, but I do like again in that um that theme of like sisterly connection you know when they're like they all go to the Bingley's house so they're all sitting on one couch and then Elizabeth is sitting on the other couch alone and they're talking about they're trying to convince him to throw a ball and then Mary's like I think uh, having a ball is like a pretty weird way to get to know somebody and everyone's quiet and then Elizabeth Caroline says, makes fun of her a little bit mm-hmm. Elizabeth says thank you Mary thank you Mary she's just yeah like, yeah, Elizabeth and like the dad are the only ones who are always looking out for Mary. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sweet. Yeah, totally. And like again, in the book and the miniseries, Mary's a little bit more like pedantic. She's a little bit more like superior almost. But mm-hmm. I love this version of her where she she's just so soft and 17 years old like <laughs> yeah and she, yeah she's excluded no one really like listens to her or talks about her or she just wants to play her piano and um I love the scene where they're at the ball and she plays the piano and she does it badly and her dad comes over and shuts it down and she's he, and then you see later in the night she's crying in the corner and he goes up and he gives the 
biggest hug yeah. and just holds her and you have the the long panning shots and you see everybody doing everything all at once but that scene where he just has the most tender moment and he's like I'm so like yeah it's so, so sweet. sweet and it seems like that where it's like you know maybe this family's ridiculous maybe they're they do things in public that are embarrassing but like that is one of the most six, sincere expressions of love in this movie about a romantic love story you know but like that moment sticks with me every time that's some, like that moment makes me cry about 50 percent of the time because it just like there's something about it that's just so powerful yeah like this father who doesn't care what his family does in public he's he knows that she's hurting and he just takes a moment to comfort her yeah it's just so sweet yeah and it, it just re- feels like a really real is. a real like moment of sincerity even with like all the ridiculous things that happen in their family yeah like at the yeah. end of the day he loves his daughters yeah you know and I as like much that. as he, as much as he teases them and whatever that's just like again because he and lizzie are so much the same he, he likes to tease people yeah yeah but only when he cares about them yeah yeah, he does not care about Mr. Wickham. He will never tease Mr. Wickham. But <laughs> no. Like, Mr. Wickham's yeah. like, I've been assigned to a regiment in the north. And he's like, mm hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. I love that scene. <laughs> so good. That's the other. Mr. I've been trying to remember literally this ever since you said they have a scene where they eat. Like, and they're actually eating. Like, they do this several times. I've been trying to remember this, and I just did. It's when they come back. <laughs> And Lydia and Mr. Wickham have just been married, and she's, like, slowly drinking her wine because she's a, an adult now because she's married. And Elizabeth just, like, takes it, gives her water. It's, which is a- It's so subtle. And I love it, too, because Lydia, she caused so much turmoil for her family over the past couple of weeks, right? But for her to finally have, like, a sense of autonomy- and mm-hmm. freedom like you, you gotta kind of respect that to some extent yeah I, I think I told you actually about this uh, I read an article a few months back that was like why Lydia's the secret hero of Pride and Prejudice mm-hmm. um, because she's the catalyst for a lot of the major events in the movie you know she's the one who yeah. asks Charles to hold the ball like I, I don't know all these little things and I think thought like you know that's interesting but I certainly don't think it's what Jane Austen intended um and you can be a catalyst for events to happen without being like the hero you know I don't think Jane Austen was like praising Lydia she's like look actually Lydia was right all along yeah those are two different um roles actually that's why they have different names Lydia's the catalyst but Lizzie's (laughs) obviously still the hero it's her story yeah I don't know I um it was an interesting article but I and that's I think why it's hard to have an adaptation of this story in like a modern era because Lydia's character is very uniquely situated to be in like Regency era you know like it's hard to you know a girl running off and getting married to like a scoundrel is maybe a bit of a scandal today but like it's not family ruin yeah it's not gonna ruin her family's reputation yeah and that's really and even in the movie it's hard to translate that i don't think they fully capture like the gravity of this they can spend extent. so much time on it you know it, but i think exactly, you kind of get it, it when out, like when lizzie, lizzie gets the letter and she comes out she, sobs goes back in and comes back 10 minutes later and can still barely speak like then you realize like this is like a huge is, deal and i think that was actually emma thompson's idea wasn't it for her to come into the room and then leave to gather herself again and then come back i don't know probably i think so because she's brilliant. when it comes to jane austen emma thompson's pretty much a genius <laughs> <laughs> so true <laughs> her like proximity to crying scenes in jane austen especially mm-hmm. no one comes close mm-hmm. it's true but yeah like they it they, they do a good job conveying what they need to with the time that they have you know it is it's hard Mm -hmm. but I feel like I started that sentence going somewhere else I don't remember where it was going this is the best freaking scene in cinema maybe (laughs) 
Ooh, you can do whiteboard. That's fun. No. And share. Aha. Yay. Ooh. Goody, goody, goody. Yay. Can you hear the audio? No, it's paused. Miss Elizabeth, I have struggled in vain and I can bear it no longer. These past months have been a torment. I came to Rosings with the single object of seeing you. I had to see you. I have fought against my better judgment, my family's expectation, the inferiority of your birth, my rank and circumstance, all these things, and I'm willing to put them aside and ask you to end my agony. I don't understand. I love you. Most ardently. Please do me the honor of accepting my hand. I like <laughs> Sarah with the biggest puppy dog eyes. And he's he's quite literally soaking wet. It's not playing the audio, by the way. It's not. How do I do that? I know the words to this scene. I can do it yeah, for yeah, you just, if you want. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Uh, I, I appreciate the struggle you have been through, and I am very sorry to have caused you pain. Believe me, it was unconsciously done. I hope it stays on there. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> you can always see my drawings. Are you laughing at me? Stay. No. <laughs> Are you rejecting me? I'm sure that the feelings which, as you told me, have hindered you, you doing and this? you in overcoming it. I have a little annotate button. I'm putting hearts around him because he's in love. Oh, I might as well inquire why with you the insulting me. You chose to tell me that you like me against your better judgment. No, believe me, I didn't mean... If I was uncivil, then that is some excuse, but I have other reasons. You know I have. What reasons? Do you think that anything might tempt me to accept a man who has ruined, perhaps forever, the happiness of a most beloved sister? You deny it, Mr. Darcy. You separate yeah, you for real. Each other, exposing your friend to the center of the world for caprice and my sister to its derision for disappointed hopes and involving them both in misery of the acutest kind. It's Zoe Caesar, I think. Aww. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> because I believe your sister is indifferent to him. Indifferent? I watched them most carefully and realized his attachment was deeper than hers. That's because she's shy. Being a Jew is modest and was persuaded she didn't feel strong enough. Because, because you suggested it. it for his own good. My sister hardly shows her true feelings to me. I suppose you suspect that his his fortune had some no, bearing on the No, I wouldn't be your sister the dishonor, though it was suggested. What, what was? was? It was made perfectly clear that an advantageous marriage... Did my sister give that impression? No, no. No, there was, however, I have to admit, the matter of your family... Our want of connection! Mr. Bingley didn't seem to vex no, himself about that. that. How, sir? It was, it was the lack of propriety shown by your mother, your three younger sisters, even on occasion, your father. The thunder? Oh. Yeah, I don't know if... You, I, you probably can't hear it. I can't, but I do remember, Your yeah, the thunder is perfectly timed for all of their, like, hard-hitting lines. Can I... hold on. Hold on. Um, so he just... He, the thunder hit, uh, like, especially right after he mentioned her father. Mm. The one person that she's like, mm mm, -mm, mm, -mm mm you know? Yeah. Not willing to hear any criticism about. I... Ooh, that's, it's good anyway. Mm -hmm. I would like actually if you can do the voices as well when you're giving, <laughs> their, <laughs> giving their dialogue. Let's do this. All right. You were going to get in respect to my concerns. Oh, yes, his misfortunes have been very great indeed. His chances in you to treat him with sarcasm. So, this is your opinion of me. Thank you for explaining so fully. Perhaps he's offended might have been overlooked had not your pride been hurt by my pride and on his ambitious scruples about a relationship. Do you expect me to rejoice in the inferiority of your circumstances? And those are the words of a gentleman. From the first moment I met you, your arrogance and conceit, your selfish disdain for the feelings of others made me realize you were the last man in the world I could ever be prevailed upon to marry. Forgive me, madam, for taking up so much of your time.
like, holy shit, you know? Yeah, that's what they're both thinking right now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. One of the scenes. One of the scenes ever. It really makes ever. you think, is this the greatest movie ever made? And that's the question that we really want everybody to ask in their minds at the end of every single one of these episodes, no matter what movie we're doing. Because <laughs> the answer is always yes. Something, yeah, unless it's something that we're actively hating on, which we've only done one time, and I don't know if I have my recording of it, so we may have never done it ever. So. I have 50 hours worth of it. I can <laughs> promise we did do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh so silly anyway yeah I don't I feel like I of course had more to say that was more in depth but I've forgotten it and so who cares I go watch the I... movie oh we that's can all I have left to say go for it okay I have just a few more things to okay. say and one of them is that you know with the almost kiss where they're leaning into each other mm-hmm he still like leans away you know Lizzie just went off about all the reasons that she hates him and she's leaning in to kiss him I think in any other romance movie it would end in a passionate kiss in the rain and Mm -hmm. they'd both like (gasps) but he like takes a breath takes a moment and he steps back he's like he still listens to what she said Mm -hmm. you know and maybe you could argue that that's like insecurity or like he's not sure that she'd reciprocate or like maybe but what it comes down to is he's listening to what she said and she's he's respecting that choice to say you know like okay I'm not gonna make this happen right now right and I really like I love that if if we have an almost kiss which has a thousand times more romantic energy than like an actual kiss you know it's like um so that's that on that mm-hmm. I also really like in like the second proposal the good one uh-huh. where he he comes walking in at dawn and it's like it's such a soft slow moment first of all it's happening at dawn so like it's already symbolizing a fresh new start this is the beginning of something you mm-hmm. know which is just what you know whatever about that yeah, who cares? But so that's like not important, probably. <laughs> Forget about that poor son of a bitch. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, you know, he comes walking in, which is so you know, he knows how much she loves to walk. Yeah, she well, loves, she's very fond that, of walking. The fact that it's at dawn means that like he started walking in the middle of the night. Like he heard oh about God. Lady Catherine de Bourgh showing up at their house. Which, by the way, she's always so mad about things being improper. Why are you showing up in the dead of night to somebody else's house and barging? Yeah, you freak. That's so weird. Yeah. Anyway, so she's a freak. He hears about it and immediately is like, well, I gotta go over there and just walks over there. Like, he doesn't know that Elizabeth is also having, like, a midnight walk because she can't sleep. He just is going anyway. Yeah. (laughs) It's a long walk. Yeah. Four miles. Have you heard the thing where you know Matthew McFadden hey, has really bad eyesight, and so Joe Wright had to hold like a big orange flag so he'd know where to walk in that scene? No, have you heard that's, that? That's very funny, though. It, it is because I'm like, why didn't they give the man contacts? I've yeah. never seen him wear glasses, so like, why does uh, he clearly can wear contacts? It's so funny, I'm going literally, in blind, baby. Literally, Anna DeBerg wears glasses. <laughs> I know. Anyway, I've always thought that was funny. funny. I'm like, but why was that an issue that they had in the first place? (laughs) Why didn't they give him? Anyway, um, but I also I wanted to mention the I love, I love, I love you. Who was doing it like them? No one. Um. I also really like Lizzie's response where she says, your hands are cold. Like, I don't know, these, like, she's yeah. been so witty and sarcastic this whole time. She always has like a, a smart retort, but, you know, he makes this open and honest confession of love again, and she's going to be sincere about it. You know, she's not going to make fun. She's not going to tease or, you know, poke at it. She's like, You're, that's all she can say. She's speechless. That's so beautiful to see this character 
that's her biggest gift is to be quick-witted and funny and she can't say anything funny she can't say anything sharp it's just she has nothing to say except just this little observation like your hands are cold Mm -hmm. that's so sweet well thank you to everyone who is listening who right now is nobody but in three months from now it might be somebody (laughs) (laughs) maybe (laughs) maybe that's that on that one of these i just i can't do it because i i'm not i I feel like it would be really rude in my head but also i i just want so badly to just leave the meeting after something like that you know and that's Mm -hmm. that on that you know and just end it and just leave yeah yeah it's so funny in my head but also i would feel so bad and i'd have to call you back immediately to apologize for it (laughs) i know you don't care (laughs) <laughs> I know that wouldn't hurt your feelings. I know you wouldn't take it personally, but like, I think about it all day. And you're like, uh, uh, I, I can't do it. No. I'm yeah. Sorry, you'd just be like Mr. Mr. Bingley who walks into the room and Mrs. Bennett says one thing that he didn't anticipate. <laughs> and he's suddenly like, um, okay, bye. <laughs> yes. He's to panic and leave. I also love that. That's a. I guess this is one more thing about that is that you know through the whole movie Bingley's been the confident one he's you know capable he feels good in any given social situation and Darcy's the one who's like (laughs) get me out of here you know if anybody nobody look at me or I'll kill myself Mm -hmm. kind of a thing (laughs) Uh, but in this one Darcy's like man you got this I'm here for you you know he's like he's he's rock he's solid he's there and Bingley panics and runs out probably to go throw up yeah and Darcy's like excuse me (laughs) you know he's so there I love that that's just a fun little switch for a moment I'm like oh okay they're just besties anyway they are yeah well cool thanks for listening thank you and you're welcome I mean bye (laughs) (laughs) bye (laughs) why why did it oh hi you're back hi it for some reason it's not wanting to connect to you oh. today. I I shouldn't be listening. It hates me. You know, it's probably the freaking ghost. Probably couldn't freaking silence leave, silence me from my end, so it had to go to your house and try to silence me from there. <laughs> like we talk about Jurassic Park. I think in every episode of this podcast that isn't about Jurassic Park, I don't know where we're talking about. Old Park. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but like halfway through that recording, it sounded like you were encountering winds upwards of 30 miles an hour. You might be in danger. Um, I think it's like, I think it's because they can't, you know? Also, I haven't seen this in bed. Bro, there is something. I think I'm just not supposed to hear the thing. I think what you're saying is too powerful. It's not meant for mortal ears because there's some moments where it's like crystal clear and then some where it like, (laughs) yeah, it's like you're trying to speak in the middle of a tornado. Hello? There's a ghost in there. I'm being censored. I'm being... The ghost is trying to silence me at 11.55 p.m. Bro, I was just going to say you've got a ghost trying to whisper in your earbud. Thinks he's being funny. And actually, he's being a little bit of an asshole. Where's the wind coming from? We're in a basement. (laughs) Oh, but also I was going to say, um, ghost probably hates women so you know women in stem he's like oh hell nah we're not gonna have women succeeding in this house yeah they're not gonna be able to speak their minds and they're not gonna remember the conversations they've had in the past because it's probably revolutionary you know what i'm saying he's blocking both of us we can't take this oppression I won't take it lying down. I will tonight because I'm tired.
What a loser. And yet, will you be silenced? Absolutely not. I'm unstoppable, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> We've always known that to be true. <laughs> That's a fact. There's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I dare you to figure out what I'm saying about Sinbad. <laughs>